and I'll listen. Stretch out my hands and I'll feel you. I'll rely on every word you say. I know you'll never ever lead me astray, oh God. I'll lean on you for my balance. I'll trust your voice for my vision.
church is non-denominational, we're probably more inter-denominational, we're from everywhere, but today we want to take you back to some Pentecostal roots, these old school songs, you may not find them word for word in the Bible, but the theology is real good, so come on, clap your hands right here, Father, we lift your name this morning, in these songs of our grandparents and our parents, here's what they say, here it is right here.
to remember what grandmama said and the stuff that we sing today if we're doing it right should parallel with the same theology that we learn for grandmama and them when grandmama would say I love to praise him today we would say my hallelujah belongs to you <laughs> that's what we would lift up we would say all the celebrations that's inside of me. I want to give it to you. And so today, Father, we lift up our worship to you because you're worthy. So we bring to you sacrifices that are old and new because what we realize is that you're the same God yesterday, today, and forever would you receive it listen my hallelujah belongs to you that's really what grandmama was saying that's how she'd say it today my hallelujah belongs to you oh my hallelujah belongs to you yeah my hallelujah belongs to you. Here is why. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. Y'all sing it right here. My hallelujah belongs. And we freely give it to you this morning. We pour out our worship on you. As freely as a water would flow from a, a cup, we pour it out to you this morning. Oh, sing my hallelujah. Come on, everybody, lift it up with us right here. Sing, you deserve it. So we give it to you this morning, you Jesus. It. With all that is within me, all I will bless you your own name, Jesus. All of the glory belongs to you. I give it to you, Jesus. Sing all love. Do y'all believe in this morning? Sing all love. All of the glory belongs. Think of his goodness to you, move to you, and just lift it up right here. Sing you.
belongs to you <laughs> And my thank you, Jesus Belongs to you See, sometimes you don't even know what other people are thanking them for My thank you, Jesus <laughs> Belongs to you mm -hmm. My hallelujah belongs Songs like that remind me of how much I need him. <laughs> my worship belongs to him because of his grace and mercy. It just makes me remember that when I wake up, I couldn't do anything without him. And talent doesn't matter, and smarts doesn't matter, and success doesn't matter. For in him we live and move and have our being. The hymn would say, I need thee every hour, most precious Lord. <laughs> no tender voice like thine can peace afford. The only part I knew growing up says, I need, Reverend King would sing this when I was a kid. The old, I need thee. Are we coming to that, that, that revelation these days that every hour I need thee. Oh, bless me now. I come to thee. This morning, Lord, we declare our total dependence on you. We realize that the breath we breathe comes from you. Whatever success we think we have, you gave it to us because your word says that you give us power to get wealth. So without you, what would we have? Nothing. You're our chief joy. You're the lifter of our bowed down heads, our shield and our buckler. You're our water in dry times your shelter in storm, your healing in sickness, your peace when our minds are going crazy. And there is nobody like you. So speak to us today as only you can. It's a great day at Christ Center Church as we honor and celebrate our very own graduates for 2021. They've worked very hard with a diligent pursuit of their education with excellence. And we just want to salute them today. So let's hear it for Lauren Starworth, 2021 graduate of St. Croix Central High School. And let's not forget the twins, Janae and Jeffrey Black both 2021 graduates of North Carolina Wesleyan College. So today, Christ Center Church, throw some hearts in the chat and drop a couple comments of congratulations to the 2021 graduates. Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Christ Centered Online. And I am so excited to be here with you today and be worshiping with you today. My name is Tim Fryer, and I'm the lead pastor here at Christ Centered Church. And this is a moment that we get the opportunity to say thank you, Jesus, for a new day, for being able to sense the presence of God in our lives. And so I want to take a moment to thank everybody that serves with us on the team here the power team at Christ Center Church because we empower people to replace a self-centered life with the Christ-centered life. 
And so this morning, I'm asking you to like and share. Hey, we have been really doing an amazing job with the sharing. Thank you. Can we push the envelope here a little bit and get us up to maybe 45 to 50 shares this morning? Or maybe you're watching this on uh, at the re-air or the time that was convenient for you. Would you take a moment and share this message and let people know that there's a word on here for them today and that there is worship that they can embrace and sense the presence of God in. Listen, thank you all so much for uh, everything that you have been doing as it relates to giving and your faithfulness and consistency there. Thank you all so much for that. All of our giving information is in the chat and we're asking that if you would continue to stay steadfast in that, we're seeing the hand of the Lord come through as it relates to everything he wants to do in the earth with our resources uh, as a worshiping community. So thank you so much for your faithfulness in that. Let's get to the word. Can we do that this morning? Okay, so we just ended um, the series entitled Binge Watch. And if you haven't uh, heard it, go out and listen to it. Um, of course, you can go to our website and get it. And you could also, if you do podcasting, everything is there on the podcast, Apple uh, podcast at Tim Fryer Ministries. So you can go there. But I want to, um, this morning, as at my, here's the plan. The plan was to do what we call standalone messages and kind of talk to you from my heart. And as the Lord started pressing some things into my heart for the next couple of weeks, um, as you would know it, we're turning right into a series here. So we want to start a two week series because there's a, we're headed somewhere in July, but I want to start a two week series today. And that series is entitled, Don't Do It. <laughs> Don't Do It, just two weeks of this. And so um, I'm excited about these two weeks because God never ceases to amaze me as it relates to what he is saying to us. And when I feel like we're at a place of, Lord, I don't have anything else to say. He said, good, I do. So if we can get rid of the stuff that you want to say and empty you out, we can make sure we get all of what I want to say uh, in there. So that's where we are. So if you would this morning, open your Bibles to Acts chapter 27. Acts chapter 27. The impression of the Lord in my heart is one that I sense the Spirit is saying to the church, stay stable. That it's not time to make sudden moves that will challenge your commitment to the Father. That this is a time of foundation building. God is uh, stabilizing foundations in our lives. And if we would let him do it and stabilize it, what we're about to find out is that there is an overwhelming flood coming from the divine, not just the spirit world, but coming from God. There's an overwhelming, a release coming from heaven over his body that there is a tidal wave of spiritual influence power coming to the body there is there is uh what i sense in the spirit the equivalent of jet fuel coming to the body and we need to stabilize and sure up our foundation in him so when it's time to move forward you'll be ready he, he's he's this jet fuel is because he is pushing the acceleration pedal forward for his kingdom and for his body. I want you to hear me with that. Now is not the time to be inconsistent with your prayer life, your fasting life. Now is not the time to be inconsistent with your commitment to the local church, because remember, the church is God's agency in the earth. So now is not the time for you to make shifts like that. And I'm going to show you in the text what God is talking about. And for the next week, the next two weeks, 
uh, today and next week, we're going to be talking about don't do it overarching theme here. But Acts chapter 27, we're going to start at verse 21. I'm reading today from the Message Bible. I love the dramatic effect that we have here. Here's what it says. Next day. Out on the high seas again and badly damaged by the storm, we dumped the cargo overboard. And uh, it, it says uh, the third day, the sailors lightened the ship further by throwing off all the tackle and provisions. It had been many days since we had seen either sun or stars. Wind and waves were battering us unmercifully and we lost hope, all hope of rescue. Verse 21 says this, with our appetite for both food and life long gone, Paul took his place in our midst and said, friends, you really should have listened to me back in Crete. We could have avoided all this trouble and trial, but there's no need to dwell on that now. From now on, things are looking up. I can assure you that there'll not be a single drowning among us, although I can't say as much for the ship. The ship itself is doomed. Last night, God's angel stood by my side, an angel of this God I serve, saying to me, don't give up, Paul. You're going to stand before Caesar yet, and everyone sailing with you is also going to make it. So, dear friends, take heart. I believe God will do exactly what he told me, but we're going to shipwreck on some island or, or other. So far, our scripture reading today, <clears throat> I want to talk to you from this thought. Don't jump ship. <laughs> Don't jump ship. Let's pray together right here. Father, in Jesus name, I thank you now for what I am sensing from you in the Holy Spirit, not just for Christ Center Church, but for the body. I thank you now that you are actively engaged in the forward motion of your body in the earth. Thank you for saving us and allowing us to be a part of it. Thank you for the setup. And so Lord, I ask today that you would speak to us through your word, give us the precepts and the concepts, give us foundational tools that we can continue to shore up the foundation that you have laid in our lives. And I ask today that you would think through my mind, speak through my mouth, give me clarity of thought and agility of wit. Allow me to talk in the power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus name, amen. Don't jump ship. So listen, as we uh, move forward in this message today, and I, I'm really going to jump right in um, the premise. What God is saying is that the enemy would have you make some shifts because times in your life or even in the world seem chaotic and then there are shifts that we try to make on our own and God says if I'm not telling you to make the shift don't move in our text today uh, I think as we started reading this text to me is so full of nuggets because Luke is writing and now we see that as Luke is writing this story that we see Paul, obviously uh, Luke or wh whomever told this story to him is on the ship with Paul. And so they're on the ship, they're prisoners, Paul's a prisoner and he is headed to, uh, to Rome to see Caesar, to talk to Caesar. And in doing so, uh, being on this boat, there is a massive storm. And I love the way uh, the writer says it here. He says that there have been, in verse 19, he says there have been many days since we had either seen the sun or the stars. <laughs> and um, 
what I think is really interesting because both of those things give light. So obviously, sun in the day, stars at night. And he said, there have been so many days since we've seen light. And God started speaking to me and he said, Tim, tell my people in these seasons where seasons or, or where moments and life gets dark, it's not time to jump ship. It's not time to uh, lessen your commitment to me because see, this is it, it is those seasons where we feel like I need to go find myself. I just don't know what I want. And so we start taking things. I think I said it last summer. We start taking things off the table from God because I need to find me. And God is saying in those seasons where you feel like you need to go find yourself. Now it's not, it's not that time for you to make less commitments to me because you'll find yourself in me. Yeah. Think about it. And so in these dark seasons, stabilize yourself, stand still, in the seasons where you feel like, I don't know what to do next. Stand still and let God bring the clarity. Because it, the season that they were in was a storm season. But I said to you weeks ago that seasons change. And when the season change and when the storm comes, uh, comes to an end, the sun comes up, the clouds roll back, where will you be standing? So he says here that we couldn't see anything for days. But the word of the Lord started coming to them. So I, let me get out of here because I don't want to stay on either one of these uh, very long, on either one of these messages very long. So I'm going to give you four reasons to stay on the ship. Four reasons to stay on the ship. Number one, here's what I think is, is crazy. But watch this. Verse 22. I'm sorry, verse 21. Let me give it to you, though. Number one promise is on the ship. And when I started seeing this in the text, I thought it was really interesting because I said, Lord, I just talked to them about promise. And he said, Tim, remember. What I'm speaking to. Is what I'm doing. Because this is a season for you that God is reaffirming and reoccurring, uh, reconfirming the promises that he made to you. The prophetic words that you had gotten in, in other seasons and other time periods of your life. God says, this is a season where I am going to bring that back to your remembrance and let you know that was me. And you're about to see it happen in your life. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but this is the season where God is confirming and affirming his promises to us. This is that season I told you back then that I was going to do it. And it's been so long that you thought I had forgotten. I want you to know that I had not forgotten, but you have just come into the place where you're ready to walk into the promise. And this is the season where I whisper to you again, you'll find the writings and the journals. You'll hear old sermons that you was like, I remember when God said that to me, you'll remember prophecies. And now is the season where God is reminding us, this is what I said. So if he keeps talking about promise, you need to start we're going back down, going back here, going in your heart, looking in your journals. What has he promised me? Dust those things off because just because you forgot and just because it was longer than what you thought, God says, I hadn't forgotten. So he's talking about promise. Verse 21 says, uh, our appetite for both food and life had long gone. And then Paul stood up in the midst of us and he starts talking. OK. Uh oh, let, let me go and say this. What did Paul say? Paul said, friends, you should have really you should have you should have listened to me back in Crete. He said we could have avoided all of this time out. I'm going to be like Paul here. And say this, Paul, here's what Paul is saying. Paul is saying we are dealing with this storm because you didn't listen to the man of God. Yeah, I said, man of God, <laughs> because you didn't listen to God's voice in the midst of you. We're dealing with this. And I want to say this to you, that some of the stuff that you are dealing with and handling in your life. And there were years of years that I would not say this and I wouldn't think this way. I, you know, I, 
I ain't there no more. Some of the stuff you dealing with is because you didn't listen to me. Some stuff that you are navigating right now, some of the storms is because years ago or months ago or weeks ago, the word of the Lord came through me to say, don't do this. And you did it anyway. Go do this. And you didn't do it. And Paul is saying, I do want to be clear and I'm not going to harp on this, guys. But I want to be clear that some of the things that we're dealing with right now is because you didn't listen to the voice of God in the midst of you. And I want to say this to you. If you cannot hear the voice of God in the midst of you, then maybe you should go somewhere else. Oh, that is so counterproductive, Pastor. Why would you say that? We're trying to grow a church. No, I'm trying to grow people who hear from God here. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to grow people. God grows the church. He empowers me to give tools to grow people. Oh, y'all hear what I'm saying? And there's some stuff that you're managing and navigating or will have to navigate if you don't listen now. Hello. Don't look at me like that. Somebody put in the chat. I'm still here, Pastor. I'm still here. I'm still here. <laughs> I didn't swipe up. I'm here. Come on. It's just the truth. And if you're here and you're visiting and watching, if there's a man or woman of God in your life that God has set you under, that you're going to have to listen to them. Listen, they do not replace the voice of God in your life. But you do have to give credence to the fact that the voice of God comes through them for your life. Anyway, let's go. Paul says, don't. He says, y'all, we could have avoided this. He said, but we're not going to dwell on this now. Watch this. From now on, he says, things are looking up. He said, I can assure you, we're not going to lose anybody in this. Listen, God is so faithful that he sends a promise in the midst of the storm. And think about it. I've said this to you before. God doesn't always deliver us from storms. But he does step in with us in the midst of the storm, Hebrew boys, in the midst of the fire. That is how he operates. And he says, I know that some of this that you're dealing with is at your own hands, but it's OK because I am going to send a word to you that will let you know that although you will have to endure this, here's the promise. Everybody is coming out alive. Come on. Somebody put in the chat. I'm coming out alive. I'm coming out of this alive. That's what the promise was. You're going to make it alive. What are you talking about? It's been dark for days. You're going to make it alive. I really want to end it all. I, 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 you're going to make it out of this alive. And God is telling you, but not only when God sends a word, does he tell you, he's also telling the enemy, don't touch him. Don't touch her. Don't touch them because they are coming out of this alive. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I know you see it feels like that the stuff you're dealing with has been ongoing and I can't seem to shake this. I want you to know that the promise of God in your life, in the midst of the storm, in the midst of the chaos, in the midst of the darkness, in the midst of you searching and trying to find you. He says, be still, rest on the fact that you're coming out of this alive. Somebody put in the chat, I'm coming out of this alive. Come on. And I love it when God, listen, when God gives a right now expectation for a right now situation, that's what he does. He says, here's what I want you to expect right now. Because see, sometimes we, we, we feel like or people talk about God in the sweet by and by in the eternal. And that's great. And yes, I'm on my way to see him and I'm going to heaven and I'm trying to get there every day. But situations happen now. And the faithfulness of God in our lives is that he'll send now a word, a promise to say, here's what I want you to expect. I know it doesn't look like it. I know it doesn't seem like it. I know you're afraid and frightened by the things that are going on around you. I know you're going to have to get wet in the storm. But here's what here's what I want you to expect. You coming out of this alive. <laughs> and I want to encourage somebody that as God has made a promise to you. I want to reaffirm this in your life that God can be trusted. Y'all with me? God can be trusted. 
Second Chronicles or Second Corinthians a one and 20 says this for the promises of God in him are yes. And in him, amen. To the glory of God through us that everything God says is amen. Amen means and so it is. It is so that the promises of God in him are yes, it is so. And as long as I stay in him and when he releases those promises, when I get in his word and get those promises, it is and it is so. Come on. Numbers 23, 19. God is not a man that he should lie, <laughs> nor the son of man that he should repent. If he said it, will he not do it? If he has spoken it, will he not make it good? Because when God sends a promise, it, it's going to happen. And the word of the Lord in the midst of the storm is you're going to make it out of this alive. I don't know who I'm talking to, but today is your day to grab on to hope and hold on to it like you never have before. It's to grab your faith and hold on to it like never before because God is saying to you, you are coming out of this alive, not just physically, but spiritually you're coming out of this alive. Financially, you're coming out of this alive. Emotionally and mentally, you're gonna come out of this alive. This is not going to take you out. Whew, I gotta go. So number one, of the four reasons to stay on the ship, number one, because there's promise on the ship. Here's number two. Number two is because God's presence is on the ship. Look at what Paul says in verse 23. He goes on to say, last night, an angel stood at my side, an angel of this God I serve, saying to me, pause, stop, wait, Paul, let's not talk about what he said just yet. Let's talk about the fact that he's there. That in the storm, God is there. Here's the reason why you can't lessen your commitment. You can't jump ship. You can't go the other way because God is there. Listen, hear me clearly. Wherever God is and wherever God is speaking, you don't need to leave. Yeah, but this is a storm. This is just hard. I just need some time to myself. Absolutely not. If God is there, if his presence is there, and if he's speaking there, you don't need to go anywhere. Because anywhere you are, if he's not there or if he's not sending a word there, it is not where you need to be. I say that unapologetically. Not where you need to be. Hmm. The presence of God. Listen, Revelation says this, that... Um, the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. And when God starts speaking, wherever there's a prophetic word, and the prophetic word may not be directly to you, but we're hearing what God is saying over the body. You need to stay still. Don't jump ship. This is not the time for that. This is not the time for that. Because his presence is on the ship. Y'all, I got to go. I got to go. So I can't, I, I don't even, I, I want to say more about that, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not right. I'm not. Okay. Let's keep going. So number one, four reasons to stay on the ship. Promises on the ship. God's presence is on the ship. Here's number three. Purpose is on the ship. Y'all, I'm telling you, this is funny to me. Cause as I was uh, looking at this text, I said, God, this is the same People, the same things that you invite to your watch party. He says, Tim, I am talking to my people. And he says, you keep worrying about saying the same thing and you want to say something new and, and life shattering and altering and deep revelation. He says, right now in this season, I'm saying the same thing. Do you have what it takes to say what I say? Yes, sir. <laughs> That's what I, yes, sir. I'll say it. It's right here. He said, you don't worry about them thinking that you're preaching the same thing. You stop thinking that you're preaching the same thing because there's some people that need to hear it at the moment that they get it, that I am right now reaffirming promises. Huh? My presence is with them. Listen, and purpose is on the ship. Listen, Acts 27 and 24. Paul says, this is what the angel told him. Don't give up, Paul. You're going to stand before Caesar yet. 
God had a purpose for God to go and stand before uh, God had a purpose for Paul to go and stand before Caesar. And God is saying, you're not going to die. Can I say it that way? You're not going to die, Paul, because I have a purpose for your life. And it ain't over yet. And this is why you got to stay in the ship, even in the storms. As long as you are where the purpose of God is for your life, you're going to make it out of this. That's why you can't jump ship right now. Don't do it. Somebody put in the chat. Don't do it. It's not time for you to lessen your commitment because God says where you are right now, I have purpose for you and do not have to keep circling the desert because you move. Out of time. Come on. Romans 8, 28. I'm trying to get to the end. I got one more. Romans 8, 28 says this. And we know that all things inclusive of everything to the exclusion of no thing work together for the good of those who watch this. Love God. To those who are the called according to his purpose. Y'all wait a minute. Let's go back for a second. Because we get excited when we hear that scripture, all things work. Yes, but we got to understand the uh, the connection there. OK, it is it is the the the, the causistic statement that says, if you love me and are called according to my will, my purpose, everything that runs jumps off in your life, I'll cause it to work together. So let's t let's flip it. OK, because we like to hear it all work together. But the, the way that it um, the way the way that that works together gets turned on in your life. If you, number one, love God and we like that part. I love God and we are called according to his purpose. I got to stay here for a second because many of us get frustrated because we don't see the all things working together. And you say, I love God. But the question is, are you called according to his purpose? Or are you running after your own? See, that's why I always say to you, I do not teach you that you have a purpose. I say that God has a purpose for you. And this text bears this out, that we have to be called according to his purpose. You want everything to work together? His purpose. And that's what's on the ship. Because we want to jump ship running after our purpose. Well, God done put something in me and I'm going out here to find my purpose. Well, whoa, whoa, whoa. If he put it in you, don't run away from him to find it. Run to him to find it. His purpose. Your gifts and talents. <laughs> That's why all things work. The storm is going to work for you, Paul. The fact that the ship is going to perish. But nobody else will, Paul. It's a part of the purpose. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. I, I only have to tie. I don't have time to deal with the fact that that ship could be the ship itself could be a type of Christ is a type of sacrifice that something has to die because y'all didn't listen and went out here anyway. Something has to die. So we'll sacrifice the ship so we can save the lives. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying. And in the midst of that, God is saying, Paul, I got a purpose. Don't stress. I got a purpose for you. Oh, man. Watch. I got to go. All right. Here it is. Purpose is on the ship. Presence. God's presence is on the ship. I'm sorry. I said God. His promise is on the ship. God's presence is on the ship. God's uh, pro uh, purpose is on the ship. And here's the last one. God's protection is on the ship. You see, we're back to it again. I'm telling you, every time God has a watch party, what's present? Look at what it says in verse 27, the, the second part of verse 24, chapter 27, verse 24. Uh, the angel goes on to say, everyone sailing with you is also going to make it. <laughs> that I am protecting folk on this ship. But but I, I do want you to step a little bit closer to that statement. The angel says to Paul, everybody that's selling with you, Paul. Could it be that everybody on the ship is protected 
because Paul didn't jump ship? Come on. There's some people who are rolling with you who will be saved because you don't jump ship. Yeah, are you ready? So you keep praying. You keep praying for your family and friends to get saved, but you feel like you don't have a responsibility in it. God is saying, mm -mm. I want to save them. I'm going to save them, but I'm going to save them because they're rocking with you. But you keep ship, you keep jump, uh, ship jumping. And he said, don't, don't jump ship because I'm trying to save these people because they're rocking with you. Mm, come on, come on. Uh, that because you stay in place, Paul writes in Romans 8.31, what should we say to these things? If God is for us, come on, who could be against us? What is he saying? He's saying, listen, I'm going to protect you. And as long as the hand of God is there protecting you, nothing can come in and hurt you. But you got to realize that there's some people in your network that God is saving and protecting because of you. And that's why you're going to have to stand still, even in this storm, because you got the promise before anything else. You're going to come out of this alive. I got to go. What is our response? Because I always talk to you about our response to what God is doing. Listen, we're not entitled to the fact that God blesses us and favors us. But there needs to be a response as a, as a result of being grateful. There's a response. Here it is, uh, verse 25, chapter 27, verse 25. Paul says, so dear friends, take heart. In other words, take courage. Here's what he says. I believe that God will do exactly what he told me. Our response, believe God. Listen, I, I'm gonna wrap it up today. But I want to encourage you that with everything the Lord has said to us and reminded us and affirmed and confirmed that we have a response and our response is to believe him. Listen, believing ain't the easiest because oftentimes our faith is established by what we see. But the word teaches us that we do not uh, live by what we see, but uh, we live by our faith. Okay, that's what the word teaches us. And so we got to trust God that he is working this thing out. That even though you're in the middle of a storm, that you're going to make it. He's established some things to let you know you will make it. You're going to come out of this alive. I promise you, because the Lord is faithful. I want to pray for you right here. Lord, I pray today for my family that's watching and listening. I pray, Lord, that you would continue to show yourself and reveal yourself right in the midst of ups and downs and challenges and uh, hard moments. I pray, Lord, that you would be with them through this. But Lord, I pray that in the areas where our faith is weak, we pray that you would help our unbelief. We believe. We've seen you do it before, but we pray today that the areas in our lives where our faith is not as strong, that you would help our unbelief because we know that you are the God that's in control of everything. Now, Lord, I pray for peace in hard situations. I pray for wholeness in the moments where we feel most broken. I pray that you would uh, infuse hope in those times that we feel most hopeless. And Lord, I pray, Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit would lead us to the rock that is higher than I in the times that we are overwhelmed. Now, Lord, I thank you in advance for meeting the needs. I thank you in advance that you will make every promise good. Thank you, Lord. And we give you praise and honor and we declare that you are the most holy God, that there is none like you, that you are holy and all adoration and praise belongs to you because we're going to praise you in advance because you will do what you said. 
And for that, we say thank you. And we ascribe greatness to your name. We say hallelujah. And we celebrate you in Jesus' name. Amen. Look, I want you to come back next week as we conclude this two-part series entitled Don't Do It. And I want you to be encouraged. If you're thinking about letting go of some stuff that you should be still holding on to, because there may be some things you need to let go of. But if you are thinking about jumping ship, turning around, as I often make the reference, taking things off the table for God, and I'm not going to do this anymore, I don't want to do this, the word of the Holy Spirit to you is rethink that, reconsider that. Because God has you even in the darkest moments of your life. So if you want to get connected to the Lord Jesus Christ today, give your life to Christ, you can do that today by texting the number on the screen. Connect, connect I'm sorry, text new life to this number on the screen. And we have a team waiting for you to get you connected there. And um, this could be one of the, or really the most important decisions of your life to get connected to the Lord Jesus Christ and the thing that I appreciate about God at whatever stage you're in you can connect to him so if you're in the middle of a storm you can connect to him he becomes your anchor in hard times he becomes the cushion and the stabilizing force so text new life to this number also if you want to join our church and become a part of Christ Center Nation you can do that and you could do that by texting the word connect here to this number. We got a team waiting for you to get you plugged in there. I'd love the opportunity to be your pastor. Look, I want to bless you uh, this week, dismiss you here and bless you. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Remember this, that you are our ambassadors of Christ, that you leave this place to seek and to save that which is lost. I declare in Jesus name that everything your hands touch will prosper and every place the soles of your feet shall tread upon you shall possess. I declare that you're above only, not beneath. You are the head and not the tail. On your job, favor waits for you. You're not the problem, but the solution to the problem. I pray a season of open doors and declare it over your life. That as you move forward, doors will open. That will be God and God's opportunity for your life. I declare money comes to you, but not just money. Wisdom to handle the money that comes your way. I declare that your home is established in peace. That your marriage is whole, healthy, and satisfied in the Lord Jesus Christ. I declare that your single life is whole, healthy, and satisfied in the Lord Jesus Christ. And the blessings of the Lord be upon you. Wholeness, benefit, prosperity, and favor. May it be your portion both now and forever. Now go in peace. And the God of peace goes with you. Thank you for watching today. I love you. Have an amazing day.